In this video, I want to talk about another type of estimator, which also has the effect of removing the problems of this unobserved heterogeneity. Okay, so let's stick with the previous example we were dealing with, whereby we had the house price in a given city I at a time T, and we said that we wanted to find out what the effect of the crime rate in that given city at a time t was on house prices. Also, I'm going to include another explanatory factor, which is the unemployment rate. So you can suppose that if the unemployment rate is high in that given city, then there are likely going to be lower house prices because people can afford uh, to pay less for houses. And Instead of including all the sort of time dummies, I'm going to assume that we've implicitly done that. So all I'm going to include here as a final term is the unobserved heterogeneity and this idiosyncratic error, UIT. So just to be clear, the problems which we had before is that essentially this whole term, the unobserved heterogeneity and this idiosyncratic error are what we actually saw as our sort of composite error, e to i t. And the problem which this unobserved heterogeneity actually posed was that there was some covariance between this unobserved heterogeneity and one or more of our explanatory variables, which wasn't equal to zero. And because of that, that was a violation of the uh, assumption which we require for least squares estimates to be consistent. So we have some sort of endogeneity. And we spoke about one way of removing this, which was using first differences estimation. In this video, I want to talk about another type of way of removing this effect, which is fixed effects estimation. Okay, so if we take this original equation, and then what we do is we calculate the average of, let's say, house prices in a given city i, but across time. So explicitly what we're doing is we're saying, well, let's take the sum of all of the values of the house price in that particular city from time period t equals one to time period t, and then let's divide through by the total number of time periods capital T. So this is the time averaged, um, or the, the time meaned value of house prices in that given city. Okay, so if we essentially do this operation to both sides of the equation, then what we get is we get that the average house price in city I across time is equal to beta 1 times the average prime rate in city I across time plus beta 2 times the average unemployment rate in city I across time. When I take the time average of alpha I, Essentially, alpha i doesn't depend on time, so when I try and calculate the average alpha i, I just get 1 over t times, I'm going to get just t times alpha i because it doesn't vary across time, hence the average alpha i is just alpha i. So then I get an alpha i here, and then finally we get our average idiosyncratic error in that city i across all time. So this is the time averaged equation of the above specification. Okay, to get the fixed effects estimator, essentially what we do is we take the bottom equation, this equation here, away from the top equation, this one here. So essentially what we get then is we get that the house price i in city i at time t minus the time average house price is equal to beta one times the prime rate in city I at time t minus the average prime rate in city I across all time. And then we get plus beta 2 times the unemployment rate in city I at time t minus the average unemployment rate across all time. And then finally, when we look at the unobserved heterogeneity term, this alpha i here, what we're going to get is we're going to get a plus alpha i from the top equation and we're going to get a minus alpha i from the bottom equation. So you can see quite quickly that by taking off the time mean, essentially we have removed this unobserved heterogeneity. And then the final term which we just get is we get the 
idiosyncratic error minus the time average of the idiosyncratic error. And it turns out that this particular equation, because we have done away with this unobserved heterogeneity, then under normal assumptions, then it turns out that OLS or pooled OLS estimates on this particular equation will be consistent. So all we require for that is we require that the covariance between our independent variables, xit, with our idiosyncratic error, uit, is equal to zero. Note that we would require this to be s if we were looking for the conditions for it to be unbiased, but we're quite happy just to deal with consistency. So we require that that is a condition for the fixed effects estimator, estimator rather to be consistent. We also require that there is no serial correlation of errors. We require that the errors are homoscedastic. And if that is the case, then fixed effects estimation will actually be consistent. Just so that you see it in another form, this is often written, if we define a variable which is called the, essentially the time demeaned value of house prices in city I at time t, and we define that to be equal to this left hand side here, then we can rewrite this whole equation as the time demeaned house price in city I at time t is equal to beta 1 times the time demeaned prime rate, which I'm writing prime tilde it, plus beta 2 times the time demeaned unemployment rate at city I at time t, plus finally we've got this time demeaned idiosyncratic error. So the tilde here just means that we are essentially, this is what our um, time demeaned variable represents. It represents that particular variable in level minus the time mean of that particular variable. So what are some of the problems with fixed effects estimation? Well, much like first difference estimation, you can see that if we have any variables which are themselves time constant, they are going to be removed. So that's specifically one particular type of problem which plagues both fixed effects estimators and first difference estimators. So the fixed effects estimator is another way of dealing with this unobserved heterogeneity term here by essentially removing it from the estimated equation. So in that sense, it's not actually that different from first differences estimator. So why would we bother to use one or the other? Why do we need to learn about both? Well, it turns out that there are some differences between these two particular types of estimator, which I'm going to cover in future videos.